What are some of the paths you can take in order to practice dermatology in the UK? Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. For those who don't know me, I'm Chris and I'm a dermatology trainee currently based in the west of Scotland in the UK. And on this channel, I share my life experiences working in dermatology, medicine and generally life in the UK. Now, there are many ways in which you can practice dermatology in the UK, but for those who are not familiar with the UK system, it can be quite confusing. And as such, in this video, I'm going to dissect the different ways or paths you can take in order to practice dermatology. Now, the main path to work as a consultant dermatologist in the UK is to get a national training number and go through the training pathway, which is a total of four years in the UK. Once you've finished the four years of training, you'll be awarded a certificate of completion of training, also known as CCT, which is awarded by the General Medical Council, also known as the GMC. Now, this is the governing body of all doctors in the UK. With a CCT, you'll be placed into the specialist register in the UK where you can practice as a consultant dermatologist. In order for you to apply for a national training number, you will need to have completed two years of foundation training as well as two years of internal medical training. There are of course other training pathways such as the core surgical training as well as the pediatric training programs, but I think according to the criteria, you will need to show proof of at least having one year of experience in general medicine. This is generally the most straightforward path whereby after obtaining the training number and completing the four years, you can then work straight away as a consultant dermatologist. Sometimes you may not be able to get into dermatology straight away just because of how competitive it is. In this case, you may wish to take a year out to do something like a clinical fellowship post. Now, this is what I did and it's by far the best decision I've ever made. Dermatology training is actually quite short and to me, four years is simply not enough for me to get the experience I need to practice as a consultant dermatologist. Now, a clinical fellowship job is a non-training post offered by the department you work in. As a clinical fellow, you gain experience by working in the department and in the meantime help boost your CV whilst providing service for the department. You can find out more about what jobs are being offered by checking out the NHS Jobs website um, where jobs are being offered in England and Wales, the NHS Scotland website in Scotland as well as the HSNCI website in Northern Ireland. You can also find out more by asking around in your local department because if they like you, they may just create a job specifically for you. The clinical fellowship job is mainly for one year and you can extend the fellowship if you want, if despite after one year you can't get a number um, and if after multiple failed attempts in getting a number, you may wish to convert into doing CSER instead. Now, CESAR stands for the Certificate of Eligibility for Specialist Registration. CESAR is essentially a non-training pathway where you collate evidence to show to the GMC that you have the same amount of experience as that of a specialist trainee. You can do it either prospectively or retrospectively, though prospectively would be easier because you can then mirror your portfolio against the specialty curriculum. The reason why there are CESAR options is because there are simply not enough training numbers in the UK. There are just a few things to take note before you think of applying for CESAR. Number one, the CESAR pathway is actually still fairly new and not a lot of departments are familiar with the process of doing it. You will need a supportive consultant who is willing to supervise you and guide you through this journey. Number two, getting the evidence for your portfolio is extremely challenging as you are not in a training path. And so having a supportive department, as I've said earlier, would be extremely useful because you need to get a lot of things signed as per the specialty curriculum. And lastly, this is not a guaranteed route. The success rate is still less than 50% and each application costs over a thousand pounds. And so this might put some trainees off because their future is not certain. Besides getting a training number or doing CSER, for those who have had experience in dermatology, either from working abroad or from working in dermatology in the UK in the past, they can choose to become specialty doctors instead. As a specialty doctor, you work alongside your consultant colleagues in seeing patients, and sometimes you might be put on call for dermatology to deal with any referrals from the wards and GPs. The only thing about being a specialty doctor is that you don't have your own individual lists um, because you still need to be supervised by a overall consultant. Now this career option probably won't apply to the new graduates in the UK because our training paths are more strict and rigid compared to the past where uh, clinicians could choose where or what they wanted to do then. Now for overseas doctors who have had experience in dermatology, this route is quite handy because you can come to the UK as a specialty doctor and if you want, you can consider doing a CESAR route to become a consultant dermatologist. 
Next, we have the LET and LESS posts. LET stands for Locum Appointments for Training and is used to help cover for trainees going on maternity leave or out of programs for research purposes, and it is for up to two years. LET appointments are advertised with the same standards as the national recruitment, and so this means you can count your LET years towards your whole training program. A LESS is Locum Appointment for Service. This is different from LET in the sense that you can't count the number of years in LESS into training. Lastly, if you can't get into any of the above options, you can then choose to do other fellowships like research and teaching fellowships. You may not get a pure dermatology fellowships because they're quite hard to come by and majority of the research fellowships are for dermatology trainees or post-CCT trainees. But remember, there are teaching fellowships. There are possible options to consider if you can't get into any of the other posts. For example, I have a friend who did one year of teaching fellowship whereby she taught medical students and did a bit of the specialty that she was interested in. She also managed to do a PG cert for medical education during that one year and that was sponsored by the department. And there you have it. These are some of the paths you can take in order to practice dermatology in the UK. I hope you find this video insightful and useful when considering your options to do dermatology. Thank you for watching once again. See you next time. Bye-bye.